Uh, as I explained earlier in this course, one of the most important applications of bipolar junction transistors use them as amplifiers. And when we have amplification, we after we bias our circuit, as shown here, we add small AC changes to the to the base, to the usually to the base voltage. This small change in the base voltage will result in a small change in the base current. This sinusoidal, this result in sinusoidal, sinusoidal change in the base current. And uh, this will be amplified by beta DC, will result in a way bigger change in the collector voltage. So this is what we have here. We have our operating point. This is this is VBE at operating point is equal to 0.7. This is VCE at operating point. Okay, and when you apply some small variations to this uh, VBE, it's actually it's actually to I base I would say uh, more than VBE. So this one maybe should be I base more to be more accurate, but it, it's, it's it's still some change in the in the voltage across the base, but this is reflected into a base change, base current change. So we have the DC. These are the DC values, and around these DC values there are oscillations. And you could see here the oscillations are out of phase by 180 degrees because if the base current increases, it's a sinusoidal and it's increasing say on the rising edge. Then this means that as the base current increases, the collector current will also increase, thus increasing the drop across this resistance and reducing the uh, the voltage of the collector going, making it go down. So it it will actually look something like this in the output. Okay, so a rising edge or a rising part in the base current will result in a falling part in the um, in the uh, output collector voltage. So and this we did we did exactly the same procedure before for uh, fed transistors. We factorize the total voltage into DC and AC, uh, whether it's base voltage, collector voltage. We factorize the currents into DC and the AC, and then we did a separate EC analysis for this for the this small signal AC signals. You see AC signals that we have for this transistor. As I explained to you earlier, we can always find the operating point of a transistor by intersecting the load line, the load line with the characteristic of the I base. So if you know that I base is 200 microampere, then this is a characteristic we're going to be using, and this would be our operating point. If we know that I base will be 300 microampere, then the, the load line representing the external equation, the equation governing VC and IC, we find them, we, we intersected with this uh, characteristic here to get this operating point and so on. Now, if we if you already selected Q to be our operating point, so we already selected Q, and then we applied some changes to IB. So we allow IB, IBs to oscillate a little bit around its operating point. So if IBs go up, means that we have to move along that operating, along that load line to the point A. If I base go down, we have to move along that operating line to the point B. Remember that your operating point must be along that line. Okay? And these are the characteristics with different IB. So when IB increases from the Q point, then you are moving in this direction. If IB decreases from the operating value, then you are moving along that direction. Notice when you are moving up or down here, when IB is going up, VC is going down, and when IB goes down, VCE will go up. So there is a 180 degrees phase shift between them. Now there is one issue with that because if if IB has strong amplitude, then this 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 uh, amplitude of VCE can start to hit the saturation region where VCE is limited to VCE set. In that case your signal will be clipped from the bottom. It will, it will not be a purely sinusoidal signal. So what will happen is that you will, you will have this base current, say, this is a weak base current. What you're going to be getting at the output will be something different, to be something like this. And then um, maybe when the, when the base increases, you get, you get it clipped here. Okay? And then it's not really purely sinusoidal anymore. On this side, maybe it may be okay. So this is called distortion. This is called distortion, and the reason for that is that if, if the if the base amplitude or base oscillations have strong amplitude, they will also cause strong changes in VCE. But this will take you out from the linear from the this 
the region which is the forward active region to the saturation and in saturation the voltage VCE is very small is 0.2 so VCE will, will saturate from the bottom at this at this uh, at this value that we have there one other thing to notice here and I should mention that VCE is always positive so even though I draw it as a sinusoidal signal but the total VCE the total VCE which is the DC plus the the AC part is always positive okay so um, so this this clipping here will happen in the total voltage as as it will not be something like this it will be maybe something like that it will be something like this here it goes down and then it gets clipped okay and then it goes up like this okay and these values remember this one here will be uh, 0.2 volts it cannot go beyond below 0.2 the VCE set that we have Okay, so this figure attempts also to explain to us what is happening. We have our circuit. We have the, um, uh, this is a transistor here, okay. Uh, we take the output from here. We have the base and we have some uh, voltage being applied here, okay. And then we impose on that voltage another AC voltage here. So what is happening um, as, a, as the base voltage increases, the base current will increase. When the base current increases, the collector current will increase. But this means that VCE will go down. Because VCE, the voltage between here and here, is VCC minus I collector multiplied by R collector. But if IB is too strong, then this will bring this voltage VCE to VCE set. And it cannot go down below that. And this is exactly what you have here. This is very strong variation in I base. So this will move you along the load line from your operating point to another point here, which is even beyond the saturation region. But the transistor cannot give you below VCE sat, which is here shown to be zero. So you get your signal clipped at zero. So even though you have a sinusoidal signal at the input, resulting in this nice sinusoidal current, what you are going to be getting at the output is a distorted version of this sinusoidal signal. So IC will be also clipped because um, uh, IC actually will have a peak because if, if the voltage here is zero, which is the VCE set taken in this figure, then the, the I collector is simply equal to VCC minus this zero divided by RC. It's going to reach a peak and then it will saturate. Okay, so now this is distortion, this is called one side distortion. And this because when you picked your operating point, you did, need, you did not pick it far enough from the saturation region. Okay, so it's a very important point when you pick your operating point to take into account that fluctuations that your transistor will be able to give you full swing fluctuations at the output, and this will not result in, in clipping the, the, uh, the signal. Another phenomenon can also happen if you select your Q point close to the cutoff case. This is cutoff here. Cutoff when the collector current reaches zero and when VCE will be equal to VCC. So if we just draw for you the circuit again. This is this is our circuit. This is the transistor that we're talking about. Okay, and this is uh, we have here the uh, source and the source will have a DC and AC and so on. So um, if you make if you make IBs if you make I base here uh, negative, if it, it becomes negative, so if if we look, it goes something like this, becomes negative, okay? If I base becomes, it goes down, this, this is the AC fluctuations, okay? If it goes down significantly, this means that the I collector will also go down significantly. It even, it may drive VBE to be even less than 0.7, and then the transistor will be off. If the transistor is off, this means that your output will be equal to VCC, and this is what we have here. The transistor has been, your operating point is here, so this means when you have I, the very strong oscillations of the base current in the negative part will drive the transistor to make it off. So VBE will not be 0.7 because the total voltage coming from this source and the AC bar dropped below 0.7. So in that case, your transistor will be off, and then the output will be equal to VCC. So the positive, the positive part of the waveform is okay, but the negative part will be clipped. 
So in that case, yeah, again, you have another type of distortion. And you can see here what's happening to IC. IC also got clipped at zero because when the transistor is off, it goes down to zero. Okay, so this, this will happen when you have your operating point selected near cutoff. So when you apply your AC signal, and again, I have to warn you, there is another AC source here added to the DC source. This AC source plus the DC source will result in a total VBE voltage less than 0.7, meaning that your transistor can be driven out to cut off in the negative parts of the cycle. And this is what happened here. When you cross this point, your transistor is off, meaning that the output saturates at VCC, meaning that the collector current is zero. This is another problem. It's another type of distortion. Uh, this is from the, from the negative uh, part of the cycle of the base current. Again, because your, ba your, your operating point was not properly selected, it should have been selected somewhere maybe here to avoid driving the transistor into cutoff. The last example that I want to show you for distortion that can happen amplifiers is when you have both cases. You selected your operating point, but the signal can be strong enough to drive the transistor in saturation, and in that case, VCE will be very small, and the I collector will be maximum, or it can be strong enough during its negative cycle to drive your transistor into cutoff, resulting in VCE to be maximum, which is equal to VCC, and then I collector to be equal to zero. In both cases, you're having distortion, because you apply the sinusoidal signal at the input, you got a distorted signal at the output. You can see it was clipped here because of saturation. It did not drop below, and it was clipped here because of cutoff. This is double-sided uh, uh, distortion, and it can happen if you don't select your uh, operating point in the proper way, or if the amplitude of the signal applied to the base, the AC signal applies to the base, is too big. Okay, so all these things have to be taken into account when you design an amplifier circuit. Okay, let's take a look at this example. We have here um, uh, a circuit. Uh, this 20 volts, 330 ohm, 47K, and this 10 volts. A VCE set for this transistor is uh, zero, and beta is equal to beta uh, is equal to 200. We'd like to determine um, the Q point, and then what is the big value uh, that for the base and the collector current to avoid distortion? So here we can assume that we can have another source, another AC source, and this will result in fluctuations around 10 volts for the for the applied voltage. We'd like to see how much can we change the base the base current and the collector current without resulting in distortion. Remember, distortion has two mechanisms. Either the base current is too strong, it goes up too much, drives this transistor in saturation, and then the output here will be very small. It is going to be zero here, and this will clip your signal from the bottom. Or if the base if the base current if the base current becomes too low or the total voltage applies applied here becomes less than 0.7 to drive this transistor off and in that case the output will saturate at VCC and the collector current is zero so this will clip your signal from the top so these are two type of distortions we have to worry about okay for this circuit we first find our operating point and for this one I followed a little bit different approach I first I first, I first find uh, the, the, the threshold values for the collector and base currents. If, if we are in saturation, threshold, uh, saturation threshold. If you are at saturation, then the voltage here is VCE sat. Then the current flowing in the collector here, I collector, I collector sat, will be equal to VCC minus VCE sat divided by R. This is given as zero, then our th threshold is 60.6 .6 milliampere. The same thing will happen for the base. The base threshold, uh, saturation threshold, is simply the collector threshold multiplied by beta DC, 303 microampere. So as long as be we are below 303 microampere for the base and 60.6 .6 milliampere for the collector, we are not in the saturation region. Um, now, what is the actual current? These are threshold. What is the actual base current? Well, it is equal to VBB minus VBE divided by RB. So it's 10 minus 0.7 divided by 47k 
is equal to 198 microampere, which is less than 300, 303, then this transistor did not saturate. It's still in the forward active region. Now we can find the collector current as well. The actual collector current, it's forward active region, is beta DCI base multiplied by 200 and ended by 39.6 milliampere. VCE in this case, the operating point is VCC minus RCRC -R as I explained earlier. This is 20. We calculated the current to be 39.6 milliampere and the resistance RC 330 ohm. You get 6.93 volt, which is way higher than, which is way bigger than VCE set. Then we are indeed not in the in the saturation region. This is forward active. Now, how far can we go from that? We can allow the base current to change a little bit, and we can allow the collector current to change a little bit by adding sinusoidal signal. But we did not hit, we should not hit the saturation threshold, and we should not hit the cutoff uh, threshold as well. We should avoid both in order to avoid distortion of our signal. So here, the peak of our the peak that we can allow around our operating point. So we have our operating point. We already found that. How far can we allow? I collector to oscillate around its operating value. Well, we have to see how far are we from saturation. We already calculated the IC set. We know our operating point, IC at our operating point. And how far are we from IC at cutoff? IC at cutoff is equal to zero. So we're really trying to find what is the maximum fluctuations we can allow from our operating point such that we do not enter into saturation and we do not enter into cutoff. So, this IC set 60.6, our operating point 39.6, IC cutoff is equal to zero, and this one here at the operating point 39.6. So we're trying to find the minimum between 60.6 minus 39.6 and 39.6 minus zero. So this one will be the minimum value, then the maximum allowed amplitude change for the collector current is 21 milliampere. And if we convert it back to the base current by dividing by B, B, beta DC, you will see that you should not allow more than 0.105 milliampere of fluctuations at the base current in order to avoid getting into saturation region or in the cutoff region. The cutoff region is, is a little bit further, so it may have allowed bigger amplitude, but definitely if you if you if your base current fluctuates beyond this value. This is the maximum allowed amplitude for fluctuations, for AC signal. You will enter into a situation and then your signal will be distorted.